Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is not a motorcycle review, so if you're here for that, I am sorry to disappoint you, but we'll do another one in the future. If you are here for a review video, you can check out this playlist up here in this corner, where I try to post all of my Should You Buy a Series videos. Instead, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail already, I spent the day on Facebook Marketplace finding some of the most interesting vehicles listed for sale. And I thought it would be fun to film a video where I do some commentary on them and talk to you about them and give you my live reaction and commentary. I went through and just kind of took the ads at face value initially and then saved them, so I haven't really dug into what each of these vehicles are, but we're going to find out. If you guys could, please hit that like button if you enjoy this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Alright, let's look at some of these abominations that real life people have posted and created. Okay, so first off, we have a stretched and lowered big bagger. Uh, you know, this isn't the worst one I've ever seen, but I, I just don't like stretched baggers. I think they look a little strange. It's okay, though. I can respect the build. A uh, big chrome front wheel here in the front, and uh, let's see what we got going on in the back. A uh, nice filled-in rear end. That actually doesn't look terrible. I don't hate this all that much, actually. You know, the... this... <laughs> Looking at the front end from this perspective, for some reason, is giving me, like, Lord Helmet vibes. You guys know what I'm talking about if you've ever seen Spaceballs. Also, these grips, I, I, I bet these grips are just terrible. So here's a shot of the rear end. I actually don't mind these lights. I think these are done really well, actually. Uh, the exhaust pipes, eh, I don't know. Those are okay. I like how it's all, like, very condensed and consolidated into the rear end. There's nothing, like, hanging off of it. That's a pretty clean setup for what it is. Uh, it looks like we've got a 131 cubic inch Jim's engine. I don't know who Jim is, but, uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm sure it makes good power. I don't hate this bike, but I don't like the big stretch tank and that headlight fairing. I don't know what's going on there. Usually fairings are supposed to protect the wind. This doesn't look like it's going to do that much for you. Uh, this bike overall, four out of 10. Next. Okay, I saved this one because I wanted to talk to you guys about what this actually is. I know what this is. Some of you might not. This is a, I, I don't know how to say the, actual name campagna campagna i think it's campagna and there's supposed to be like a little tilde over the n and the g is supposed to be silent anyway it's called a t-rex this machine is created from a kawasaki zx14 and if you don't know what that is that's basically kawasaki's sports touring competitive model to the suzuki hayabusa uh and, and this kind of competes in the same category of, like, a Vanderhall and a Polaris slingshot. So, like, it's a two-seat roadster with super sharp handling. Except I think this one's actually pretty stinking fast in a straight line also. Uh, just because it has that ZX-14 motor. But with all of the added weight of the frame and everything, it's not as fast as you might think it is. It, it looks really cool. It looks fast and it looks unique. And if you were going down the street in one of these, you would definitely turn some heads. But, you know, you can do whatever you want to your vehicle. But whenever you put, like, big wheels on these vehicles that are supposed to be, like, roadster-style, very sharp-handling cars, you kind of lose me because you're, you're taking away from what the car is supposed to be. But it's fine. It's your money. Spend it how you want. You're not spending my money, so I don't care. So if you like spending money on stupid stuff, go ahead and do that. But overall, pretty unique and cool machine. Again, it uses a ton of parts from the ZX-14, including like a dashboard, I believe, uh, and of course the motor and transmission. But then you get to the price tag. And $55,000? Man, I can go out and get a turnkey slingshot that didn't have to be built by a separate company for substantially less than that. So... Uh, never driven one. Maybe they're a lot faster and a lot more fun than I realize. Uh, if you have had the opportunity to drive one of these, let me know in the comments below. Okay, next. Uh, so right here we have a 2012 V8 chopper trike. You heard that right. There's a big honking V8 in between your legs on this big Samba gun right there. Look at that. Uh, this trike is actually done pretty well. You know, it looks tough if you have to be on three wheels. Uh, but for 40 grand, I I don't know about that. I, I guess most of the money on this one is going to be tied up in the engine and all the custom fabrication. Um, uh, it's also got reverse. It's got cruise control, adjustable coilovers in the rear, and it's got under 3,000 miles. Obviously, I'm not a trike guy. Most of you are probably not trike people. 
But if you wanted a really like hot rod trike, this isn't a bad option. I, I don't hate this. Um, for a trike, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to be generous here. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because I bet it sounds good and I bet it's actually not as slow as you think. Next. All right, I need you guys to prepare yourselves. Please take a seat for this next one because what I'm about to show you is an absolute mind and really hard to figure out what you're looking at until you read the description. So let's look at it and then let's talk about it. Okay, so here's the first photo I want to show you. This is clearly a three-wheeled vehicle with a lot of stuff done to it. Let's just make a quick photo observation and talk about what we can see. So we've definitely got some custom wheels on the front, and you can clearly see that there is a very, very fat tire on the rear along with a custom swing arm and what appears to be a chrome spoiler uh, with some writing on it. And I think it says Kennedy Trinity Ellington. Uh, if that's your name, this might be the spider for you. Okay, let's go through the rest of the photos real quick. Oh, we've got some speakers. You can jam out with your clam out on this one. Looks like a custom uh, handlebar setup also. Look at how big that rear tire is. The rear tire is like wider than the body of the spider. That's, nah. Uh, and then we got a close-up of the tire. Uh, it appears that most of the parts on this bike came from All Things Chrome. I don't know what that is. And based on this photo, I don't know if I want to know what that is. But um, you know what? Let's, let's talk about this thing. So per the description, it's telling us that this is a fully customized 2008 Can-Am Spider with a Hayabusa motor conversion. Probably a much more peppy and more reliable engine than what came in this Can-Am Spider originally, which would have been a Rotax 990 V-Twin. And this individual has also got a full custom paint job. Front Forgiato wheels, I, I think that's a high-end brand, and a rear 1500 fat tire kit, which was pretty obvious, a light kit, a sound system, uh, the Voodoo Sidewinder exhaust, which I think is a decent exhaust for the Hayabusa, chrome see-through clutch cover, that's pretty cool, chrome chain guard, chrome triple tree, chrome grips and levers, chrome master cylinder, and chrome clutch and brake lever pit. And for all of this work, this snowmobile with fat tires and wheels on it, made for the streets, can be yours for just $45,000. That's right, folks, $45,000 to the first individual who can put it up to come get this thing out of his garage kennedy trinity ellington if you're out there however many of you there are this can-am spider was made for you you know he didn't mention the spoiler huh whatever uh this thing absolute three out of ten i cannot imagine anyone who would want this uh price tag at forty five thousand. the only thing that would devalue it more would be if things were not done properly which it looks like they were uh but yeah three out of ten on this absolute f Next, okay, this one, I, I know a lot of you have probably seen me like do hate on Harleys and stuff, but I only do that because it's a fun thing to do. Deep down, I have a soft spot for some of them, and this would definitely be one that I would ride happily and really enjoy. So, this is a 2023 Harley-Davidson Road Glide, and all of the work that is done to this is something that I would do to a Harley-Davidson Road Glide if I bought one. I'm giving this bike a solid 9 out of 10, just because I love all the work they've done, but I don't love all the chrome that's on it. I would want it blacked out. So for me personally, 9 out of 10. For a lot of other guys in the performance bagger scene, probably a, a solid 10 on this bike. I mean, look at it. It's got a, a carbon fiber front fender. It's got a 119 cubic inch big bore engine. It's got a two into one exhaust, a Sly Fox seat with a nice like big lumbar area. So you're not going to slide off when you crack the throttle got a carbon fiber rear fender, it's got engine guards, it's got mid-control foot pegs, and it's got 17-inch wheels, so it turns in a lot quicker than your standard bagger. I bet this thing absolutely rips, and for $54,000, I don't know that the price is 100% justified, but it's at a dealership, and it's not a crime to make profit. So, uh, again, 9 out of 10. Next, uh, I wanted to throw this one in here because I absolutely hate it, and uh Big wheel baggers with stretched everything on them. Just, God, it drives me up the wall. I don't know why you'd ever want to ride something like this. It's not functional. Sure, you get to keep your bags and you have all the storage and whatnot, but man, there's no way this ride's good. And anyone who tells you that it does, they're full of shit. Again, though, your money, spend it how you want. I, I cannot hate on you for making yourself happy. That's fine. But, oh my God. Gosh, man, I, could you imagine pulling out of a parking lot where the, the drive out of the parking lot 
is like this tall and you go down and the tail section of this big bagger just cracks and breaks on that. It's like the, the guys that lower their cars all the way to the ground and then are disappointed whenever their bumper gets ripped off whenever they hit a bump in the road. God, I hate these. But it looks like it's executed pretty well. And you know what? I, I can't hate a person for doing what they love. Five out of ten. Next. Okay, so this is on here. It's not a motorcycle, but this is a vintage Yamaha golf cart. And I kind of just love the way it looks. Uh, I, I would assume that it would function like a normal golf cart. And it's got a little overhead valve engine in it, it looks like. So it'll probably just run forever and ever. But this thing is almost five grand. Maybe they just hold their value well because it's vintage and it's in good condition. It, I kind of really like it. I don't need it, but I kind of want it. Uh, 10 out of 10. This this is a 10 out of 10 vehicle. Garage kept, original owner, drives strong and smooth. I have no doubts about that. Everything seems to be in very good condition. Uh, yeah, 10 out of 10. Next. Oh my god, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a stallion. This ain't it, chief! Uh, I'm fairly certain these use a Ford Focus engine and transmission. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be but some kind of cross between a car and a traditional motorcycle trike. Uh, yeah, I mean, this thing speaks leaps and bounds for itself, but look at this. It's, does, is that a steering wheel? That is a steering wheel. Yeah, dude, this is a Ford Focus, but it's got, like, motorcycle setup for a passenger and an operator. It's got audio, it's got cup holders, uh, and I guess that these hold their value, too. 27,500. What? What the f- And it's 75% of a Ford Focus. Could you imagine paying $30,000 for a Ford Focus? Like, a first-generation Ford Focus? Like, the 2004 model? 2003? That's all this is. Uh, I- this hurts my head. And it says you won't find another one this nice. Yeah, because no one buys these. If you want a trike, buy a trike. If you want a car, buy a car. This is just weird, because uh, unlike most car trike combo things, it doesn't have the two tires in the front. It has the two tires in the rear and one point of contact in the front. So it handles like absolute dog ass. Uh, I, I just, I don't know what to make of this thing. <sighs> it's in really good shape though. So, uh, man, it's only got 12,000 miles on it. I mean, whatever. It's in good condition. It's really unique. You probably won't see anything else like it on the roadways if you wheel up to a local bike night. Eight out of 10. Next. <laughs> okay, this isn't a motorcycle either. But I just thought it was so crazy, and it belonged in this video. This is a 2023 slammed lawnmower, baby. It says, make me an offer. I'm halfway through the project, just putting it out there. I have a single cylinder, 10 horsepower motor to go with it. Trying to find a V-twin for a motorcycle engine. That doesn't make much sense. Will trade, make an offer, not $5. What about $10? No. Dude, this thing is so rad. Look at it. I mean, it, talk about low and slow. It doesn't even have an engine in it. A lot of custom fabrication on this here hog. Wow. I mean, just the, the craftsmanship and the precision that went into this build. Um, Let's go 3 out of 10. It does not run, but he is open to offers, and he might be lucky to get 50 bucks for this thing. Next. Okay, this is another Harley Davidson. I'm sorry. But this 1982 Harley FLTC, I don't know what that means. I'm going to call it a Tour Glide because that's what it says on the fairing. This thing appears to be in such good condition. It is so clean. Uh, and it's got a bunch of motor work done to it. It's got a, an S&S &S big bore kit to a whopping 88 cubic inches. A zippers cam. I don't know what that means. It's got a thunder header. <laughs> and I love his honesty. He says, not a showpiece. Clean Illinois title, $5,500, or trade for an ATC 250R, and that's like an old uh, three-wheeler from Honda. But man, this thing is actually in good shape, and I, I kind of dig it. This is like grandpa bike, just to, to the absolute max, and it looks like it'll do everything you want it to do. I, I bet this thing would go across America, and it wouldn't skip a freaking beat, and it'll probably leak oil the whole way across the country. So carry a spare quart with you, and you'll probably make it, because you know what? If it's leaking oil... It's not a big deal. That means there's at least oil in it. It's whenever it stops leaking that it becomes a problem, because that means there's no oil left. Uh, this bike, 9 out of 10, really. It's in such good shape. 9 out of 10, he's got a, I think, a fair asking price. It's kind of vintage, and it seems to be taken care of. Next. Okay, I, I don't know what's going on here. They're asking $3,000. Running and driving 2012 Harley Motor Transmission Primary Drive comes with a Kentucky salvage title. Salvage title. All you need to put her back on the road, it's not even in driving condition. All you need 
is a frame and a front end. Great project bike with very little work. What does that mean? Very little work? So you didn't do jack shit to it and it's just like thrown together because that's what it looks like. What does the tank say? Jezebel? Oh my god. And they want three grand for this thing. Oh my god. I, I have to quit looking at this. One out of ten. Do not buy this. Anyone. Ever. Next. Oh, okay. I remember this one. This 1999 Honda Shadow. Very short description. Excellent shape. Mini extras. Honda Shadow Tourer. BT 1100T. Cash only. 3,500 bucks. 52,000 miles. Uh, I would maybe give this guy like $1,000 to $1,500. This is not a super desirable machine, but it is in really good shape from the photo. I mean, look at how clean that front wheel is. That is, mm, this thing's mint, honestly. The bags seem to be in good shape. I don't see any nicks on it. I'm sure if you got up close and in person, you might find something. But really, I don't know. You know, I would give him a thousand, but if someone really needed like a clean cruiser that was road ready and in good shape, this thing might be worth, you know, three grand to $3,500 to somebody. Uh, show me eight out of 10 because the bike is in amazing condition. It has the matching bags and everything to go with it, but the price is a little too high in my opinion. Next. Okay, 1975 Yamaha XS. Uh, this is super cool, actually. It has a matching sidecar, which means that this bike handles like absolute crap, but it matches, it looks functional, and I bet this thing would be so much fun around town in uh, in the city. I like this a lot. I've not ridden this bike in a while, but it is definitely a fun bike to ride. I, I get that from your, your pictures here, sir. Has many newer parts on it. The bike was gone through about four years ago. Okay, so it needs to be gone through again. I mean, four years ago, a lot of stuff can happen in four years, even if it's just sitting. That means nothing. $5,000. Um, yeah, probably not. I'll give you 500 for the bike and maybe like 250 for the sidecar. I'm not giving you five grand for a 1975. I'm sorry. I'm sure it is in good shape, but I wouldn't pay that. That much for this. If it wasn't for the asking price, I would say 10 out of 10, but because of the asking price, 7 out of 10. And, and maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not super educated in vintage bikes. You can flame me in the comments. Whatever. Next. Okay, this is a custom electric bike. This is actually really cool. The guy's got a video of it running, and it looks comfortable, it looks practical, and it looks like you can ride it around town fairly easy. Pretty minimal suspension. Uh, in fact, I don't think it has any, but it does look like it's really well done, and it's got really nice paint, nice white wall tires, and I mean, look at them go. Four grand. I think this is actually probably worth four grand. I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. Good bike. Next. Oh, okay, so I threw this one in here. It's a Suzuki Busa TRP trike bike thing, kind of like that T-Rex one I showed you earlier. Ah, I mean, this is just like a, another one of those. This is all it is, but it looks fun. It looks a little bit better than the T-Rex, in my opinion. I don't know what it is that's throwing me off to make it look better, but this looks like a fun ride. And th I mean, look how happy this dude is. Good for him. A and he's asking 28000 I think this one's probably worth about that. That T-Rex was like, 55,000? I, yeah, no. Um, this dude, I'm gonna give you an 8 out of 10. This is, this is a cool build, and you're being realistic on price. So yeah, I, I bet this thing is actually really fun to drive. You know what, I'm gonna bump you up. 9 out of 10. Bravo. Bravo. Okay, next. We're almost done. Oh, this is another Suzuki Hayabusa build, and yeah, this one is uh, a little bit different, because I'm pretty sure they just took a smart car, hacked the back off of it, and then took a, a Busa and shoved it in between the seats, and that was it. They, they called it a day, and they were like, this is gonna work, and it kind of did. 6,500 bucks, uh, and, and it does have a title. I'm surprised about that. Uh, 2014 Hayabusa. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous, but I love it. Is it worth 6,500? Um... Mm, probably not, but you definitely could not build this for 6,500. So, 6 out of 10, this is a death trap. Next, and this is our last one, by the way. So this video is almost over. You don't, you know, have to suffer through any more for now. Here we go, Suzuki Trike, 3,500 bucks. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, <laughs> this guy took a Suzuki Boulevard front end with a 2005 Chevy Blazer and put them together. Uh, and he kept the Blazer driveline, so it's a, a V6 automatic car thing. I don't know what to call it. But it runs and drives. It has two seats. They are stadium-style seats. I feel like you could have probably kept more seats in it, but that's fine. Uh, it's very long, so the possibilities of a rollover are not super great. Look at that dash work. Look at this premium craftsmanship. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. Well, uh, this one speaks very loudly for itself. Uh, not a whole lot I have to say about this. Good for him. 
He put a lot of work into it, and he's only asking 3500 bucks. Needs finishing touches. See, that's that's my, my problem with this. And selling due to health reasons. Needs seats mounted. Needs a front tire. This thing needs a lot of work for 3500 bucks uh, on something that I don't even know that you could get registered, or if it even has a title anymore, because the VIN is no longer on the front half of the Blazer, and now the VIN of the bike is on it. So I, I don't know what you would do with this. Uh, realistically, this thing's probably worth about 500 bucks. So if you're in uh, Waterford, Michigan, this this could be for you. Um, I don't know. I guess for the uniqueness of it, 3 out of 10, because the price is not great. Oh man, that was pretty grueling. Uh, okay, so I might do another video like this in the future, uh, but I would like to see your guys' bikes. So please send them to me in an email. You can send it to omnimoto1 at gmail.com. I will compile all of them together and have them in a video just like this where we can talk about them and go through them, and I will give you ratings out of 10. Uh, I've got my affiliate links below for Foggy Garage and Bantru Dash Camera Systems. Check those guys out. Use my codes. You can get some nice discounts. I don't have anything else to add. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and then i'm gonna go probably bleach my eyes from everything that we just looked at goodbye have a wonderful week be kind and ride safe